Hi everyone, this is Benny Grab, and we had some extra time here at the shoot of the introduction of the new wonderful Benny Grab signature snares. I love them. I'm of course a little bit biased, but that comes with the territory. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I tune my snare drums in particular. Most of the things that we will do here will apply to tuning in general, okay? But let's now stay with the snare drum itself. Usually, um, I say that you need a couple of things, uh, that you need a chair, because we will apply pressure, we will stretch the head in between. Now, with toms, uh, uh, rack toms, floor toms, I love to stretch them on the drum throne, on the seat. Um, with a snare drum, we will not do that because of those wonderful snares down here. When we press them down uh, on a seat, we will damage the rezzo head and the snares. So that's why we're here on the floor right now, because the, the stretching and the basic tuning with snare drums, I always do on the floor. A carpet is ideal. We don't have one here. We'll do it quick and dirty this way. Last disclaimer, um, this is not rocket science, okay? We will not do any super complicated stuff where you have to uh, like tune a certain pentagram shape or a numeric system, this one first, then the one across. We'll do it very simple. I think many people make tuning way more complicated than it has to be. But the thing that I want you to do is, and take your snare drum, right? Do this with me, stop the video if you have to, and follow along with those steps. But the sequence is very important. If you leave out one thing and you think, oh, I can do it later, it will be way more complicated. If you follow it with the steps that we will do here, it should be a breeze, or if that's a proper word to say. Okay, are you ready? You can stop the video, get your snare drum if you, if you want to, and here we go. Good. Now, I have here the new updated uh, Benny Grab Signature Snare Drum in beech wood. This is nice. This has the two internal dampeners in there that we call the felt and the sheep. Uh, we will use them at the very end. If you don't have those, that's okay. This will also work with your snare drum, most of the stuff that we will do. Okay. So what do you need first? You need a little bit of equipment. The first one is this, a tuning key. You might laugh and say like, yeah, of course I have a tuning key, but what's important is this little thing on top here, this rubber sleeve, noopsy kind of thing, however you call that, because I want you to be able to turn this without turning the wings of this thing. This will become important, okay? So, tuning key with, some, uh, with, with this noopsy on top, not only the wings, okay? Now the Remo uh, uh, um, key has a little advantage. You can even fit it into every drill, right? This top part, you can do this. This makes it a little bit easier, a little bit faster. If yours doesn't have this, it will still be fine, but we need this. Good. You need, second, a mallet, right? Oh, this looks very rock and rollish. This is better. Uh, a nice mallet. I don't want you to become a great timpani player, but this thing alone turns people that are, have problems with tuning sometimes into people that are like, oh, I got this, because you can hear the pitches way easier. You can hear um, the pitch of each, like near each tuning lug a little bit more easy. And this is very important for what we will do. So get so I use the American Custom T2 cartwheel from Vic Firth but get get just a mallet that's not too soft not too hard and it will serve you well it can always stay in your stick bag if you only use it for tuning it will last forever okay so tuning key timpani mallet and a fresh head now this is the heads that my snare drums come with uh, some people are sometimes uh, confused this is an ambassador coated, okay? Even if it has the nice Sonor uh, logo on it, it gets delivered from the factory with those. This is an ambassador coated. Please use an ambassador coated. It's the most uh, versatile drum head. You can get any sound with it. If you are not exactly sure which head to get, get an ambassador coated as a better head. You can't go wrong with that, okay? So, the first thing I want you to do is to turn the snare drum around, get nicely on the floor, and the way you tune this thing is, 
by lifting the snare wires up and just checking the pitch like this. You can do it with the with the mallet like this and just check whether all of them are the same. Those two sounded a little bit lower. The main thing, and this is the most important thing, whenever I get a rental uh, snare drum, when I tour around the world, or I see snare drums uh, in practice rooms or recording studios, they usually don't make this nice high, like cranked timbales kind of sound. This is important. The Rezo head does something very different uh, than a, on a snare drum than it does on the tom-toms. You want the rezzo head to be really cranked up, nice and high, so you can almost not press it in with your thumb, right? It really should be nice and super high. So get it nice and super high, so it's, um, it really has some nice resistance to it. This will make it very sensitive and will make it way easier to tune. So just get it up to that level and see that they sound kind of the same. When you pick up the snares like this, you can really hear the pitch compared to, and it's very hard to listen to. So pick up the snares and get that nice and high. Very important. Now, you get a new head. It's way more easy to tune with a new head. Um, sometimes heads can be so old that I, couldn't tune them. Some people say like, oh, I can't tune, but when your head looks like a three-dimensional card, like a Google Maps card of the Alps, uh, you can't tune it. So make it so it has a nice long sustain, wonderful fresh head, and you take it like this. What I sometimes do is I fold it a little bit and then fold it back. I sometimes think it makes the sustain a little bit longer, but so this is, you can do this step or, or you can leave it out. I think a little bit esoteric uh, thinking is involved here too. But now it's important. So you take this thing, if you're as obsessed as I am, you look that the logo is lined up. <laughs> then you take the rim, the hoop with all, the little uh, tensioning rods and you just feed them so that they all go into um, the tuning lugs, the nice teardrop lugs, the vintage lugs from Sona, very nice. So, so they're all in there, they're all very loose. Now step number one, you lower them until they barely touch the hoop. Okay, you lower them until they barely touch the hoop. Step number one. You don't want to apply any pressure now. You just want to get them low to get in a good beginning kind of starting point, okay? Some people lower them down, already applied tension. Don't do it. Just lower them so they barely touch the rim. I will do this with this drill. We will speed up the video a tiny bit and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, welcome back. Now, see, this is still loose, but I saved myself a little bit of time with the drill. So now, still step number one, I wanna lower it till they barely, they're still loose and still move a little bit, but they begin to touch the hoop. I wanna get to this point with every one of those. And again, we will do a little bit of a time-lapse thing, and then I'll be back. Welcome back, good. Now, they all are touching the rim, the hoop. This is step number one. Now, step number two. You take this noopsy up here and you go around, you just remember which one you started with and you go around and you just make with this like a full turn or something like that equally. Uh, and if you hear those cracking noises, that's wonderful. That's okay. Don't worry. Ugh. Now this is my first round. I'll do a second one. Oops. 
Second one, next one. Now, on my third one, this might be different uh, depending on how your screws are threaded and everything, but I already feel a little bit of pressure here. Still, I haven't used those wings, I only use this. And now it's get getting hard to turn. That's good. This is a little bit harder now. Now, with the next round, I might already arrive at points where I can't turn it anymore with just this. I want to get all of those uh, tuning rods to the same point where I'm like, Ugh, I can't turn it anymore with this rubber sleeve, okay? Ah. And just one last one to check. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I really have to apply a lot of pressure here already. Yes. Great. Why is this so important? This allows me, and maybe you realized I haven't played the snare drum so far at all. This gives me a mechanical way to get to equal tension around the drum just with my fingers just by feel. This is very important because uh, it allows you to tune your snare drum when you're not allowed to be uh, very loud yet, right? When you're behind a stage or there's uh, uh, people are setting up stuff, you can do that quietly. Or when it's even too loud, so there's another festival going on, you're backstage and you can't properly hear, you can get it to a good point where it's almost at, at uh, equal tuning already, but definitely equal tension, just mechanically by terms of feel, okay? So you wanna get to that point where it's like, oh, I can't turn that anymore. This, is my, this might be different for a floor tom because I tune my floor tom very low and this would already be too high for the floor tom, but for the snare drum, it's an amazing starting point, okay? Now, the next one is I will do the same thing now with the wings. This is the first time where the wings come in and I'll just do like a quarter turn. Quarter turn once around. Okay, great. Now, let's recap for a second. What was the first step? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Lowering the tuning rods till they barely touch the rim, okay? Second step, finger tight in small steps around the drum. If you do it in small steps, you don't have to jump to the across or anything of that complicated stuff. You can go around, but in small steps, just go around till you can't not turn it anymore, okay? The next step is the wing. Do it in a quarter turn around, maybe once, maybe twice. But... Um, so you, you get to equal tuning, that's the most important thing. We can still take it up and down completely later, but this is a great, great starting point. Again, you maybe realized I haven't listened to this once. This is just a mechanical way for a great, great starting point. Now, why we did it on the floor is this, because I now want to do this. I take my, 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 the, the palm of my hand and Okay, there is no, not much cracking. We had enough cracking here. Sometimes it will crack, that's fine too. But that's the way how you seat the head really nicely so it doesn't kind of uh, uh, jump over, over the bearing edge uh, even more when you're playing. You wanna do that while tuning. Okay, so stretch it a little bit. Now, this will be the first time when I listen to the, the drum head with this guy, with our mallet. Because I can, I'm a f uh, fortune teller, I will now say that there will be a melody, usually it's da 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 or da 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 because when there is one out of tune, it will usually be, uh, sound the same on, uh, on the, the lugs that are across each other, right? But with the, 
technique that we use so far, we are already so close that it will be way easier to hear those differences. Another secret of tuning is when, when those lugs are very far apart and you just do it a little bit by feel from the beginning with the wings, they're then so far apart that you can't really tell which one is which and it's very complicated. So this should be quite obvious. Maybe it's already close, but now let's give it a listen. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. I'm very pleased with that. This is very, very close. Now, listen again. What I hear is... It's tiny. You could even leave it like that, but... This one is a little bit higher than that one. Do you hear that? Ba, 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 ba. So I will just get this one a tiny bit and this one. Again. This one as well. This one as well. But honestly, this is great. Let's put it on the uh, snare stand and let's give it a listen. Okay, welcome back. Now. I like this because there's no, <laughs> you know. Like sometimes you hit the snare and it's wee, 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 wee. you can hear those wavy things or like that's when like different frequencies of different lugs fight each other when they're not in tune. This <laughs> then you have everything in tune. So let's see. Sounds great. This is a highly tuned snare drum. It's uh, it's pretty much there where I want it. What I would do with my uh, with my model is I engage one of those dampeners. In this case, the sheep, as we call it. This is a very live room. You don't maybe hear it that much, but it really controls the snare drum uh, snare sound quite a bit. Now, last thing I want to tell you is, if you want only the pitch to go lower, take uh, one of the logs that is facing you and just give it another turn down. Or maybe another one. If that's not enough, take the other one that's facing you and hear the difference. It will still be a nice sound. It will not sound out of tune necessarily, but um, I'm very happy with that. So follow those steps and you'll be fine. The very last thing I want to tell you is this. I want my snare drum to be super, super sensitive. So there is no weird sounds. There's no bzzz afterwards, no snare buzz. But what's also very important is when I barely touch it with the stick, then I still hear the snares engaging, right? And you only get that if you don't over tighten the snares. What I sometimes hear <laughs> is this, and I only do it for this purpose now, okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my God, don't do this at home. Most of you do this already. <laughs> then it sounds like this. Do you hear this? 
these are the snares telling you, help, help. Horrible. This sounds like a tom-tom, right? And then, not much, uh, so what happens is this. The snares are so tight that they basically dampen and press against the reso head and don't give it that openness that you maybe want. I want at least. So, watch. Listen to me freeing up the snare again by, by loosening uh, the snares itself, okay? And you, this is the perfect point for you too that you should search for. I would at least recommend. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but... Now, I will loosen this and you can hear this tone disappear and make it... and you will hear that it sounds like a snare again at a certain point. Okay, so listen closely. It's a little bit noisy here, but I think you get the idea. So I can't do this in this point. A little better already. A little better already. Right? And here we are. this was helpful to you um, check it out check out the new snare if you want to um, and whatever you do have a great great day thanks bye